Remember that time I went for a ride with Jeremiah Bishop? Yes, two times US national mountain biking champion Jeremiah Bishop. Well, and then there's me. <laughs> Come on, Vian! Let's go! This wasn't just any ride either. Oh no, Jeremiah gave me a pre event tour of the Jeremiah Bishop Alpine Loop Grand Fondo. This is one seriously challenging route, but one that will reward you with some incredible views along the way. Join me as Jeremiah takes us for a spin through some of the best parts of this loop. We're back with another mountain road ride, gravel ride of the week video, and this time We've got a pretty special guest on this channel, Mr. Jeremiah Bishop. And uh, today we get to ride Jeremiah Bishop's Alpine Grand Fondo Loop with the man himself. So that's <laughs> that's pretty cool. I, uh, I really like that. Um, so we're here in Harrisonburg right now in front of the courthouse um, in downtown Harrisonburg. So why don't you tell us a little bit about the route that we're going to do today um, and the event that you're putting together? Absolutely, there's a, a lot of backstory to it, but the long and short of it is Harrisonburg's been my home for many years and I've traveled all over the world racing bikes and I always thought at the end of the season, hey, we should bring the show back here because the riding is world class. Don't believe me? You're just going to have to go and see it for yourself. Yeah. <laughs> and so we started this as just a group ride. At the end of the season, we would celebrate, have food. I'd have some of my friends that are pros come and join us. And we'd just party and, and drink beer and, and, of course, ride hard. You know, one big final blowout for the season and uh, kill each other. <laughs> so a friend of mine, uh, Robert Hess, with Prostate Cancer Awareness Project, um, also Cancer Journeys, uh, the symbol you see on the side of your jersey there, uh, inspired us to host it as an event. And he said, hey, we should do an event. It would be a good awareness thing for men to get their PSA tested, uh, preventative uh, health care, of course, being super crucial um, in early detection of a lot of cancers. Um, and so I said, this sounds like a lot of work. And he was like, you know what, you should do it. It'll be great for the community, great for our commerce, um, and just a, a, a super fun way to showcase the area. So, so we did, um, and that was 10 years ago. We turned it into an event, and part for the course, I don't like to do anything small scale, so we wanted to do the best event in the Mid-Atlantic, and we've held up to that standard with really, um, Phenomenal food and croissants and Pellegrino and the aid stations. Of course, you're not going to experience that today. Fortunately not. <laughs> uh, and a big party rollout with 600 people just taking over the street, police escorts, sirens blaring, and uh, rolling out in mass for the mountains. But when you get out from the mountains, it's very remote, very, uh, very rustic, and, and just beautiful. Uh, and I think I wanted to share that adventure and maybe that scariness of the scale of the ride with folks. So we'll be out there, no cell phone reception, no stores, just bears and old <laughs> abandoned villages and beautiful mountain descents and the mountain roads that you're looking for. That's it, you know, that's how it ties in with mountain roads. Well, I'm excited. I think we better get going. We've yep. got a couple of really cool spots to go and check out. Um, and obviously, you know, with Jeremiah, I get to see the best of it. We're not going to do the full loop today, but he's going to show us around the course. We'll get a little bit of taster of what it's like. So if you're interested, check out that event later on in the year. It's uh, the AlpineLoopGrandFondo.com. All right. Last weekend in September. So I think it's the 27th. Excellent. Right. So uh, I'm excited. Let's go check it out. All right. Ready? All right. Let's do this. <laughs> So the rollout is uh, always quite aggressive with a big group. And so we'll be rolling out at 20, 25 miles per hour. 
I think this year to be a little more fun because we'll have waves and they'll be starting in groups of 10 or so or whatever you're comfortable with and people can ride it kind of at their own pace uh, more or less certain that we're gonna get a good workout in today I got that feeling well he wasn't joking when he said that we will be getting in a good workout even on the fast and flat part of this route, I was still fighting to keep up with him. After I finally caught back up, he told me more about the event and the route options available. We want to share European cycling culture. We want to share the camaraderie and that, that spirit of uh, adventure. Yep, the ability and, to go and explore. I think, you know, that's, that's the thing that's, exactly. that's made this type of cycling, this genre of adventure slash gravel cycling, so appealing is it's for everybody. Not everybody yeah. can become a pro road racer, you know, yeah. race at the European level yep. um, Grand Tour, but everybody can build their own little adventure, you know, yeah. and go on an exploration ride. Exactly. And that's, I think that's what the beauty of this sort of riding is for me, yeah. is it makes it so accessible to anybody. Yeah. Just go out and have a good day. Yeah, yeah. and that's also why we had the uh, the other route distances so we've got the Shenandoah Valley route which is 30 miles so you know if you're a weekend warrior you want to get out support the causes uh, hang around for the party afterward the music then there's something for you if you're more into pavement there's the 75 mile Shenandoah Mountain Challenge which is a fantastic fantastic route it covers the first big paved climb we'll do and then goes up the paved section of the back side of this great wall that is Shenandoah Mountain. And then of course the Alpine Loop. And the Alpine Loop is not for the faint of heart. If you don't have experience on gravel or don't have experience riding a rugged terrain, you might want to do a shorter route first. <laughs> but if you do, you'll love it. Interval number three. There we go. Full gas, full gas, full gas. Up, 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 up. There we now go. We're in the now we're in the farmlands. I told you, you're out of the city, like, and in the middle of nowhere immediately. Yep. This also is the first taste of the gravel. And the Shenandoah Valley gravel is among the best in the world. I'm not kidding. It's limestone. So it's very easy to break and very smooth, and it packs down nice and tight, like Strada Bianchi. So I think you'll also see that the gravel here, it slides nice too. <laughs> the tricks the pros can do, the <laughs> <I> can't. <laughs> oh wow, look at this. This is awesome, yeah. There's our first climb. We Woo! haven't even done a climb yet. Yep, the climbs were beginning to show themselves. We made our way through to the next spot on the list. A massive paved climb along Route 33, which leads into West Virginia. But I'm sure you'll agree that the views along the way were definitely something to behold. <laughs> So this is the climb up to the state line, Route 33, a very old road into West Virginia. Also one of my favorite climbs, the views on the west side are phenomenal. Big drop off, okay? <laughs> this side's older, so it's a little more narrow and a little more trees. But this is not yet the biggest climb on the route. No, no. <laughs> this is a very nice climb, but it's also uh, only about three and a half miles. The longest one's 14 miles long. And this will test the legs. First time segment. It doesn't make your time for the Fondo standings, but you can lose the shooting match here if you get dropped. Uh -huh. Okay, we're right here. 389 watts, 390, 370. Good pace, good pace. He's making me work. You're on for the top five. He's making top me five work. for this time segment. Woo. 
And now we'll go up to 410, 420, which is KOM pace. That's about 410 watts. Yeah, that's a, that's a little bit above my grade. <laughs> yeah. 200 meters, KOM line. Let's go, let's go, let's go. All right. How was that? And that is how a pro does it versus an amateur. Uh, so that's how you butt get kicked by Jeremiah Bishop. Doesn't it feel good to crest the top of that? Well, this overlook never looks so good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you'll like this downhill. This downhill is the, the sweet reward. Oh. It feels like it just goes on and on and on. 15 minutes of downhill coming. That sounds good. <laughs> That downhill was one seriously incredible experience. Amazing views and exhilarating switchback turns everywhere you looked. They don't come much better than this. We stopped in at a store in Brandywine where Jeremiah showed off some of the local food before we headed off to the next big climb of the day, Fault's Gap. Oh, all the gears, all the gears. Easy. You better pace yourself. <laughs> at this point, I wanted to show Jeremiah that there is at least a hint of climbing talent in my legs. So, I decided to see how much I could push the pace and just went for it up this climb. Man, you're putting me in the hurt locker. <laughs> nice work, buddy. I'm impressed. Let's see if we can hold this up for another 15 minutes. That's the real test. I could obviously only hold off Jeremiah for so long and it didn't take long for him to not only catch back up with me, but he even had enough energy to pass me and then proceeded to tell stories to the camera about the route while I suffered in the background. Little does he know it, but we're about to enter Jurassic Park. You're probably asking, what the hell is Jurassic Park? Well, you cross this cattle grate and it's open range. And so we came up here during the foggy edition of the Alpine Loop Grand Fondo and there were these cows and bulls in the woods and we couldn't hear them, but we just heard And all we can imagine was it had to be dinosaurs somewhere. <laughs> And this is how you suffer up a steep West Virginia gravel climb. <laughs> ah, yeah, doing it halfway, halfway. <laughs> <laughs> That KOM line right there. We finally reached the top of the second time climb. I'll let Jeremiah show you just how much fun the downhill was because I was somewhere in the background trying to recover after putting down the hammer early on.
We made our way through to Franklin, West Virginia and its beautiful water crossing views. Next up, it was time for the main attraction of the day. One absolutely mind-blowing climb to the top of Reddish Knob. I was lucky that I could skip out on the first part of the climb on that day. But if you do want to see what the road looks like along the Shenandoah mountain pass, then be sure to check out my other Gravel Ride of the Week video, Little Switzerland, where we ascended that part of the climb. Let's fill in the blanks near the top of the Reddish Knob. <laughs> The back side of Reddish Knob, the dark side as we call it. <laughs> this is phenomenal. So at this point you're climbing for 10 miles. You've climbed 2,000 vertical feet, 2,500 uh, vertical feet, and you're up to the last 500 feet. The soil starts to change, turns this reddish, almost purple look to it. So it's really very, very unique. And we're getting into the section that gives this route its name, the Alpine Loop. Up here in this high uh, portion, the air gets a bit thinner. You'll get freezing temperatures at night year round at some point um, of each month of the year. And uh, it's nice, change of uh, foliage. You also have um, no mosquitoes up here, which is also a treat. And uh, we'll top out here, the very top of Reddish Knob, top of the world, in just about 10 minutes. wonderful West Virginia place dear to my heart poorly understood by many Jeremiah wanted to highlight a one last climb along this route the final sting in the tail, a short but steep climb just outside of Harrisonburg. The last climb of the Alpine Loop Grand Fondo. You feel like you've gone on a massive voyage from the farm country into the mountains, into the Alpine region, up to the highest point of the course. And now you've made your way back through the Shenandoah Valley, saying goodbye to all the cows, <laughs> goodbye to uh, the valley, and we got one last sneak climb, one last test to see if there's any juice left in the legs. You ready? Yes. The top of the climb. Here we go, and we did it. Well, Jeremiah, thank you so much for showing me around oh, yeah. on your Alpine Grand Fondo loop. Yeah. That was something, pleasure, really. something truly special to experience. A bit of a, a, bit of a chance to show you my 